everybody to this uh, to the committee meeting this morning. Uh, Mr. Clerk, we uh, do have a quorum, so I believe we can proceed. Why don't we begin with the items that are on what I refer to as the uh, consent calendar? That would be items one through six. So if you'd start off with those. Okay. Uh, item number one is a Los Angeles County Registrar Recorder, County Clerk and Los Angeles City Clerk Report relative to an update on collaborative efforts towards consolidating elections of the City of LA, the LA Unified School District with the election run by the County of Los Angeles beginning in 2020. Item number two is a City Clerk Report relative to the 2015 Municipal Elections After Action Report. Item number three is a CLA report and resolution relative to including in the city's legislative program support for HR 1217. Item number, four, item number four is a CLA report and resolution relative to including in the city's le legislative program support for legislation to lift the restrictions on the Centers for Disease Control and National Institutes of Health that <coughs> prohibit them from conducting research on gun violence. Item number five is CLA report and resolution relative to including in the city's le legislative program support for HR 1076 and Senate Bill 551. Item number six is a CLA report and resolution relative in to including in the city's legislative program support for the proposal by the California Department of Transportation to construct a landscape wildlife corridor bridge over the 101 freeway at Liberty Canyon Road in the city of Agora Hills. Okay, then let's run through these. Boy, this is loud. But anyway, let's run through this. Item one, we will note and file the city clerk's report. We'll do the same, note and file the city clerk's report for item two. Item three, we will adopt the CLA report and resolution. Uh, four, the CLA, and uh, we'll adopt the CLA report and resolution. Five, we will adopt a CLA report and resolution. And six, we will adopt the CLA report and resolution. So without uh, objection, those items will be deemed approved. Okay, why don't we now move to uh, item seven? Item number seven is a resolution of Farrell Wesson, Huizar, Harris Dawson, and CLA report relative to including in the city's 2015-16 state legislative program support and or sponsorship of any legislation to provide additional funds for permanent support of housing in cities and counties across California, including the potential to reprogram current Mental Health Services Act funds, a general fund increase for this purpose, the feasibility of issuing bonds from current revenue and use by this act and or other new or additional existing sources of funds. My dear friend, Mr. Ahn, Mr. President, welcome. Uh, and Chris, if we can get this, a report, I guess, from the CLA's office. Come for Wickham, just come on forward and give us a run through. And then I do want to say that I have with me today a dear friend of mine for many years, Mr. James Hahn. Uh, I don't know why you're here this early, but it's always a pleasure to see you. Okay. With that said, go right ahead. Good morning. Um, Gabriel Salazar with the CLA office. Um, before you is a report relative to a resolution um, that recommends a city position for, sponsor, um, for support and sponsorship of any legislation to provide additional funds for permanent support of housing, um, including the No Place Like Home initiative. Um, subsequent to the introduction of the resolution uh, last month, um, State Senator Pro Tem Kevin DeLeon introduced a legislative package to repurpose Prop 63 bond monies for housing income support and outreach to prevent and address homelessness. Um, our revised resolution um, provides um, that new language. Okay. Well, uh, I, I know that uh, Mr. Harris Dawson and I and Mr. Weezar, along with Mr. O'Farrell, were uh, excited 
uh, about the opportunity of seeing this occur. And then last week when Mr. Uh, uh, President Pro Tem uh, De Leon, uh, you know, announced the support of him and, and men members from the state legislature, I think that bodes well. But I have a card on this, and I'd like uh, John, John Holland to come down. Thank you, Mr. President. John Hallen with the Central City Association. Uh, CCA strongly supports this motion. Um, housing and homelessness are a crisis in this city. Homelessness, as you mentioned, Mr. Weston, last week, homelessness has long been a crisis in downtown Los Angeles, and it's unfortunate that it's had to get to the condition it is now to get uh, the attention that it uh, has so long deserved. Um, my colleague and I attended uh, President Pro Tem De Leon's announcement last week, and this is a great step. Uh, the city must not only support these budget priorities, but work actively to make sure that they pass. We all know that the governor can be very conservative in how he views fiscal matters and may work to knock this down and, and, and reduce it from the scope that the President Pro Tem and his colleagues are uh, envisioning. And, and so I, we wholly encourage the city to work uh, with this, the Pro Tem's office to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, the Sacramento funds are vital, but uh, they're only a piece. The city, the county, and the state must all work together to create solutions to housing and homelessness throughout the city. And CCA stands by ready to work with you. Thank okay, you. thank you. And, and before we go on, uh, Mr. Uh, Harris Dawson, you know, I just want uh, folk in this building and outside of this building to compare where we are today where it relates to our commitment to homelessness uh, to where we were last year. I do think that this city, under your leadership and Mr. Weezar's leadership, that we've helped uh, push the ball down the field. We've uh, taken the lead. You see the county engaged and the state engaged and so this is the one time one time that I feel very optimistic as to where we are uh, your committee will be meeting later and uh, first time we've had a, a standing committee that deals with homelessness and poverty and you get here in July and 10 minutes later I give it to you <laughs> so I have every confidence that you will lead us in the, 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 the proper direction and we'll make some progress. Well, I, I truly appreciate that, Mr. Chair. I, I just um, also want to point out that uh, upon joining the council, I think it was a few short weeks later, uh, where I get a phone call and says, you know, we're going to have a press conference committing $100 million to, to homelessness. And I was like, whoa, where's that coming from? How did we do that? What was important about that day is it started off what I think was a cascading set of events. And so you saw the county step up, you saw our committee uh, and the, the folks at the county begin to work closely together. The next thing you know, I'm hearing from the incoming speaker of the state assembly as well as the president pro tem about what all they want to do and how we want to do it together, uh, which I think is unprecedented. I think, you know, government has spent lots of money on lots of things. I think if there's one thing we're going to be able to say at this process is the level of coordination uh, will be at its highest level uh, that we've seen because of the momentum uh, that the leadership of this body has created. So again, I want to thank the chair for putting this forward and, and um, setting the poll uh, in the city for uh, others to respond to. Well, I, again, like I said, I'm excited. We, you guys are working on a comprehensive plan. We are in constant contact with the county, in contact with the state, in contact with a lot of the agencies or the, the uh, community-based organizations that provide services. And uh, uh, so, you know, I think now we're putting the team together now it's time to put the plan together, which you're working on. And uh, uh, I think the people of Los Angeles should, should feel confident that help is on the way. So any other insight from you, John? Um, just to note that the housing department um, expressed some um, interest that we um, make sure that the formulas to allocate any funding under this program are fair in distributing based on need in the state. 
Um, so well, we why don't we bring Rush up here? You're here, Rush. You're looking good. Your beard is trimmed up, distinguished. A little, yeah, it is a little gray. That Working for the city will do that for yeah, you. Absolutely. But uh, maybe you'd share some thoughts. Uh, well, uh, first of all, good morning, and thank you for morning. the opportunity to, to address you. Um, much like any of the other state or federal funded programs, uh, it is important uh, that the city of Los Angeles ensure that uh, we get the appropriate proportional share based on needs, and that has not typically been the case with federal funds and in some instances state funds. So as we're dealing with this crisis, as we've deemed it a crisis here in, in the region, that we, along with the county, need to ensure that we are putting forth our best efforts politically to ensure that the data is driving the decisions as to how those monies are being allocated. We have the vehicle by which to allocate those resources, both through our managed pipeline of projects, working closely with the Housing Authority and, of course, the County of Los Angeles for the wraparound services and, in some instances, for the uh, rent subsidies. So we have the machinery in place. It's just a matter of getting the appropriate resources. Well, we're going to be counting on you and, and your colleagues uh, because, like I said, I think this is, this, this is not talk. No. This is not optics. This is about... Uh, trying to, you know, government, we had two main responsibilities, one of which is to uh, keep our residents safe. The other is to take care of those that cannot take care of themselves. And so I, you know, this is serious, and we're going to count on you and your colleagues as well as uh, you, you, you as well. So any other statements? There are several strategies in the homeless plan that will be considered this afternoon that relate specifically to intergovernmental relations. So Perfect. So working with the state, working with the League of California Cities, working with the county, working with the other cities in the county to make sure that working with SCAG, to make sure that it's not just the city working alone, that we can take a leadership in bringing the region and the state together on these issues. Well, this is one time also that we are in a very unique position. We have individuals on this council that are not only skilled or experienced, but that have deep and real relationships with individuals at every level of government. And when I think of the county of Los Angeles, I personally served with three of the sitting members and with all of the other reps on the council that have served at the state, they have relationships. You take Mr. Harris Dawson here, he has relationships with so many of the nonprofits that provide these services. So I, I, you know, if there was ever a time, I think it's now. So we would be very interested in, in your recommendations, uh, how to proceed. And I think the governmental relations uh, piece of it is going to be more important than a lot of people think. And I actually will add, and we're really looking forward to the committee meeting this afternoon, uh, chaired by Councilman Harris Dawson, as we discuss the strategies not just for the brick and mortar, which these dollars we're referring to this morning uh, address, but also the rapid rehousing, the shelter in place, uh, the vouchers. There's a, a triage of different methods by which we're going to have to address this, both for brick and mortar as, follow, as well as getting people off the street and addressing the storage uh, issues as well. So it's, you know, this is one potential source. There's going to be uh, multiple silver bullets here that we're going to need. This just happens to be one, and I, I very much welcome this this conversation and the momentum that we're, we have here, understanding that there's just not one facet. There's multiple facets that we need to address with multiple sources of funding. Thanks, Russ. Okay, now another thing that has not been really talked about a lot, and uh, Chair uh, uh, Harris Dawson and I submitted a, a motion where we begin to come up with a strategy, a strategy that incorporates LAUSD. Uh, it's our understanding that they have approximately, approximately 16,000 students that they would classify as homeless. They do provide uh, some services uh, for these uh, uh, young people, and so they need to be incorporated into our conversations. There should be a seat at the table for them 
as well. And that's one of the reasons why we submitted uh, this motion uh, yesterday because we wanted it memorialized and we wanted to send a message that we in fact did want to do that. This uh, uh, came up in conversations with school board member uh, George McKenna, Dr. Uh, George McKenna, so I would hope that as we proceed we could uh, make sure that he's in, in right at the point because he's the one that brought this to our attention. So anyway, uh, I think uh, you guys did a good job. Let's just keep on uh, doing it, keep on moving forward. And uh, uh, unless Mr. Harris Dawson has anything else to say, I just want to thank you and we will move on. Uh, okay. So, uh, Mr. Clerk, on this item, item seven, without objection, we will adopt the, uh, the, uh, the CLA report and revised resolution is that correct okay is there any uh, additional business before this body uh, no sir that clears the desk okay then without object no more cards or anything uh, no no speaker cards okay then this meeting this committee committee hearing is adjourned